Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, February 16th. Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilk is our guest this morning, so let's go on the record. She's on the top tier of the state house power structure. How she balances the push of a Republican governor with the pull of a Democratic legislature. Thank you, New Hampshire. A trio of Democrats lead New Hampshire with delegates and momentum. None of them named Elizabeth Warren. So what happens now? Ranking climate change as a political issue. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. Great to have you with us. And our guest this morning is Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilk. It's great to have you with us it's this morning as well. Here. She's a Democrat. She has held the top office in the Senate since July of 2018, first elected to the state Senate in 2005. Before that, she was a member of the House of Representatives beginning in 2001. She holds degrees from Cornell University and North Eastern University of Law. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for having me. So let's jump right in. Transportation, it's probably the hottest issue on Beacon Hill right now. Uh, just about everyone who drives, who takes the train, who takes the MBTA, hates the congestion, they hate the conditions and the delays. The biggest dilemma, of course, is money. Um, does an $18 billion plan require new taxes, do you think? Well, the $18 billion plan that I think you might be referring to is the bond bill that, that's out there. That's so, correct. Uh, right now, just, just to backtrack for a minute, if I can, um, transportation congestion is one of the biggest issues that, that I hear about no matter where I go in the state. It's not just Greater Boston or my Metro West, the Central Mass, North Shore, South Shore, Western Massachusetts. We are number one in congestion. That's not number one that we want to be in. So uh, we are looking looking at policy. Uh, I would love for us to, to focus on public transportation. Uh, what policy we have, uh, Senator Joe Boncori, head of the Senate trans side of the Transportation Committee, working on a working group, convening people. That was one of the first things I did when I became Senate president, knowing that this was a big issue. Uh, so he has been working along with other senators and, and uh, interested p parties and stakeholders. Um, we need to focus on uh, getting people out of our cars. We need to focus on policy. The Senate is looking at, we may be looking at revenue, but that's not what our initial focus was or is. What do we want to accomplish by, by policy? Uh, the major thing that we need to do immediately is get people out of their cars. So are you saying in a sense, perhaps less money for fixing roads and bridges and more money towards upgrading trains and the T? Well, I'm not looking at it necessarily that way. I think, no, I think we need to fix our roads and bridges. I think that they have been underfunded for, for years, if not decades as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we need to look at short-term fixes and medium to long-term fixes. Short-term fixes are uh, things like, um, the, the bond bill, the t uh, transportation bond bill, the $18 billion, which is a major infusion of, of funding and revenue into the transportation structure. Can you do structure. that without more taxes, though? Can you the bond bill is, is not taxes. We can do it with TNC, the transportation network, some funding with TNC that. TNC is? The, the transportation network, Good. the li Uber, Lyft, yep. you know, that, that way. But that's so only a couple hundred million dollars. Though. You're right, you're right, for now. But you have the, the TNC, there's some other things we're looking at for short term because we, it's there's a real sense of urgency. So, so Governor Baker spent his first term saying that he had to get the MBTA and commuter rails finances in order before he could justify new revenue. Well, riders can tell you it hasn't worked for them so far. So right. does the Baker Oh, it hasn't worked for almost anybody well, so and far. So does the Baker administration, not just the governor, but the secretary and her staff, bear responsibility for the poor service today? You know, I think some, but I think we all, we all have some responsibility, to be honest with you. So I, I think that what we need to do is look at, we can't manage our way out of this. We mm -hmm. need revenue. We need immediate revenue. Uh, we, we need revenue to be looking at um, uh, making transit, our public transit system. People aren't going to take it if it's not affordable, reliable. But isn't there enough revenue safe. there? Is, is it being applied correctly? I think we need more revenue. You think what kind of revenue? Well, well, that's what we are looking at. Gas what, tax, but is for, that something that should be considered a gas I, I tax? I think a lot of things are being considered, but again, 
you know, what policy, mm -hmm. what do we want the revenue to do? That should drive our policy. We need to change behavior, and that's what our Get policy is. Get people out, of their, out of their cars. onto public transportation, but that's not going to happen if right. it's not affordable. That is one of the major things. It's got to be affordable. We need, I believe, we need to uh, reduce the fares for public transportation, the T, the commuter rail, the RTAs, we need to make it more affordable. We so need to make it more reliable, convenient, frequent, and safe. For example, just recently, I wanted to take the commuter rail into Boston one morning. I had an event, and then after the event, I was gonna go to the commuter rail and mm -hmm. then take the rail, commuter rail back. Mm -hmm. I would have had a two and a half hour wait sitting at the train station before the next Sitting train at the came. train station. So I guess my question, are you telling me that a gas tax would maybe force people more out of their cars onto trains, but perhaps what we need to do is put more money into the train so there are no delays so people can rely on it. Is that what you're saying? It may not be, it may be the gas tax, it may not be the gas tax. You have the TNC, there are other tools that we are looking at for short term immediate infusion to make public transportation more affordable, reliable, convenient and safe. And then long term, we have the TCI initiative that the governor is working on and Katie Theo Harrity's the Secretary of, of Environment and Energy. And then we have also the fair share amendment I, that I, would bring I, an infusion. This is a very extensive, and complex segment, but I want to I move to the next issue because uh, there was another major issue that you have taken on, and this is called the non-disclosure agreements in the public sector. Recently, folks who weren't paying attention to this issue took notice when a former Fox anchor, Gretchen Carlson, came to Beacon Hill to support a bill allowing victims to make them public. Do you see enough votes in the House and the Senate to make it happen this year? I think people need to better understand non-disclosure agreements and what they do. I take this issue very, very seriously. When I became Senate president, we banned the use of non-disclosure agreements in our Senate rules. Officially and formally, we banned it. So we're currently looking at the language, Senator DiZaglio's language. It came back to the Senate in study, so we are looking at it. Uh, and there are various ways that we are approaching it. But the bottom line is, I believe, that there are ways, many other ways, that a victim can be protected and keep the issue confidential if the victim wants it without using a non-disclosure. So I believe we can protect the victim without silencing the victim. That's what most non-disclosures mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do. They silence the victim and not protecting the perpetrator. Two quick questions. Do you think this is something that should be extended to the private sector when it comes to sexual misconduct, sexual assaults? And number two, do you think it's going to have something's going to happen on Beacon Hill, at least for the public sector this year. Uh, I, I'm hoping that we can work together. The Senate will be working on it. I will reach out to the House and the Speaker and have discussions with the governor. I think uh, there is uh, this is moving. I think that people's minds are beginning to change a little as they better understand nondisclosures and the fact that you can protect the victim without silencing. Even in the private sector. Well, we'll take a look. We'll meet with folks in the private sector. But I think starting with the public sector uh, might be the way to go. All right, we're, we're hitting the point where we're going to reach into our pocket. <laughs> oh, she's got a big smile, a smile on her face. Yeah, it, it is what it is <laughs> at this big, point. Big, you know? broad <laughs> smile that went up in her face. It's really nice. All right, here we go. I, I, this is my first time looking at it. All right, ready? What ready. began as the Massachusetts Bay Colony later became the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. What patriot from the Revolutionary War was responsible for the word Commonwealth in our state constitution? And I'm going to give you choices on the screen. Was it Hancock? Was it Adams? Or was it... Elbridge, it's spelled Jerry, but it's pronounced Gary. So who was it? Hancock? John Adams. Or Adams. Wilton, I yeah. almost, you know, you should go with your first guy. That was your first guy? <laughs> yeah. he, wrote, he wrote the Massachusetts Constitution. Yeah. And all three gentlemen, by the way, signed the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, Jerry is known for the Jeremy. Jer right? Excellent. Ex absolutely. Uh, so you were largely responsible for bringing a bust of Frederick Douglass into the renovated s Senate chamber at the State House. So after his escape from slavery, what Massachusetts community did Douglass first settle in? Was it New, New Bedford? Be it was New Bedford. She knew that right off the top of her head. They later, He and his wife later moved to, to Lynn. Lynn. Yep. Well, good. Okay. Well, we're going the Commercial. We got Do I get a point for that? One? You can tell <laughs> it. We'll be right back. Yes, you get a point for that.